Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone on behalf of ASA Abloy Academy to this uh, presentation entitled, How Do You Know If Your Product Meets the Criteria of Its ANSI BHMA Standard? Your instructor today will be Chris Sanger. I will allow him to do his own introduction, but I wanted to uh, let you know that we do have a chat feature. You can type your questions and answers into the Q&A section and we will try to address them. We will also save time at the end for additional questions. Uh, we have allowed an hour for this session. I don't believe we'll go that long, but uh, based on the questions that you have, we will uh, make every effort to answer them here in this session. If there is a question that we can answer, we will uh, reach back out to you via email. Uh, when you signed up, you did uh, sign up with your email address. So if it's a question that we can't answer on uh, online, we will take it there. And the recording of this session will be available within 24 hours uh, for your uh, review. And with that, uh, Chris, welcome. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm the manager of regulatory affairs for the Access and Egress Hardware Group and a big part of the presentation today is uh, telling you about the uh, new Builder Hardware Manufacturers Association Certified Product Directory and, and how Asa Abloy is uh, involved in BHMA uh, as well as throughout the industry. So that's uh, extra material building up to the answer to the question. We've uh, made a big investment in a new online directory uh, to enhance the user experience uh, via the ease in which you can get to the data that's meaningful to demonstrate a product is in fact uh, certified. One of the most important benefits in addition to the ease of uh, searchability is that the data is always current. Uh, every manufacturer that participates in the certified product directory must maintain a current uh, test reports as evidence that uh, the products are indeed certified. So you know up to the minute that a product should be in the directory. It's always current. Asa Abloy is a uh, uh, invest quite a bit in BHMA membership. And the reason they do that is uh, it's our means of influencing the, uh, the building codes, uh, the um, international building codes, as well as uh, other places, other certification performance generating bodies, such as NFPA and ISO. Uh, this is a, a big vehicle for us. To, to be able to demonstrate that our investment in innovative products influences performance-based standards and, and hence it changes the building codes for the better. The, the value of having products in a certified product directory is that uh, each one has been independently tested and certified. Uh, what that that means is that uh, BHMA utilizes uh, two primary uh, test labs, which are, these are uh, independent uh, third party uh, labs and they oversee the, uh, the testing of the products, how products are grouped into families and, and hence uh, the, what the test plans uh, look like. They're very, the labs are very involved in ensuring that the manufacturer has the proper coverage for the products that they're certified. This is of tremendous value to a customer who needs assurance that a product does in fact meet these standards. One of the, uh, the important things to note is that it's, it's in fact quite rare that a product would only carry a single certification. 
And I, I wanted to give an example, which is a fairly common product. This is a cylindrical lock. And to point out that the performance aspects of this product would be covered in a cylindrical lock standard, which uh, in this case is uh, A156.2, uh, in addition to other attributes of the product, which are tested via a separate performance standard. So this particular product has a mechanical cylinder and those, that cylinder is, is a specific type of input device that would be tested in A156.5. If another model variant of this product had an access control input such as a, a keypad or a, uh, a card swipe, that product too is an input device and would be certified, uh, as well as the electrified uh, aspects of the product. So the function and functionality of, uh, of a, a motor or a solenoid that provides uh, the locking would, would be verified in A156.25, as well as these products are offered in a variety of materials and finishes, and that too uh, is, has a performance standard, A156.18. So one product would or could conceivably have several different certifications, which are all of high value to a customer to ensure that all aspects of the product meet their needs. When Os Abloy and others are involved in the uh, in BHMA, a big part of the membership is developing the performance-based standards, not only from a blank sheet of paper for products that are new to the market that are not served by other performance standards, but also the revision process, which uh, is very rigorous to ensure that every standard being maintained by BHMA is current, reflecting the, uh, the latest materials, manufacturing methods, uh, testing methods, et cetera. This process that I'm describing is the uh, ANSI essential requirements. Uh, all of the BHMA standards are ANSI standards and hence they follow this process. And a, a big part of this is that uh, it's the openness of it, uh, that it is consensus by the industry. Well, define the industry. The industry are manufacturers of the product, but also the laboratories that conduct these tests. The US government is a large customer of products from uh, this industry, and hence they require the products meeting these performance standards. Users are able to provide uh, input to this as well. And in some cases, I'll say the general public or, or general interest, which uh, could be consultants or lobbyists for a, a particular industry. So what, what this shows is there are a lot of people involved in this, a lot of different parties, and the investment by Asa Abloy is a necessity because of the pace in which uh, we bring new products to market. And, and when standards come out of this process and are published, it shows that consensus was reached within the industry. So how does BHMA work as an organization? Uh, this shows, I'll say from a top to bottom approach, the, uh, the leadership from a board of directors and an executive committee, uh, and then down through the, uh, uh, the involvement in the different uh, code bodies that I cited earlier. Marketing is part of this too, because that is the, the vehicle in which we communicate uh, via trade journals, websites, and other means of reaching the intended, uh, uh, the intended audience. And then within the standards development process, there are the subcommittees that work within the technical sections. Those are your subject matter experts that are guided by a standard steering committee and they develop the specific performance requirements and give direction to the certification program. So the, the detail of uh, how products are 
our samples, what constitutes a family, the, uh, all of the different uh, very specific attributes and aspects of testing are defined there. Uh, we're very involved, hence the, the quote, you get out what you put in. We, we need to be involved because we are a leader in bringing new products to market and this is the means to ensure that there are accurate performance requirements for these types of products. It's, it's quite a bit of work. There are over 40 standards uh, uh, in, in this count 43 that are, are either starting from a blank uh, sheet of paper to uh, ones that uh, have been in use for decades that are constantly being revised. And they're all at various stages of development relative to following the ANSI essential process. So hence we track that here. This hopefully gives, gives one a sense of uh, the amount of work and investment that we have to make. Um, I don't do this alone. It, I have a great team. There are several uh, people that work closely with me relative to managing the projects, uh, giving technical input, mechanical and electrical engineering uh, input, uh, as well as uh, the, uh, the support of a test lab that participates in both uh, Underwriters Laboratories data acceptance program, as well as Intertech's data acceptance program, which is known as Satellite. Both of these programs are audited to ISO 17025, which demonstrates uh, that uh, we are operating a test lab in the, uh, in the best ways possible to ensure that this data, the data that we generate is, is correct for the performance standards. So there's a lot of people that support this effort. Coming on June 1st, uh, which uh, is uh, very close, uh, um, we're very close to that date, is the official public launch of the BHMA certified product directory. So the old, the old version of this, uh, a manufacturer would submit a PDF document and that would serve as a certificate of compliance. It is not searchable as the database is structured. With the new database, uh, it's, a, it's truly a database. So you're able to, uh, to sort and filter by various means such as uh, the ANSI code or a particular standard or a trade name or trademark for a product. Uh, and uh, this enables you to look at the data in many different ways. And, and I'm sure all of you who try it will enjoy the experience. For the membership, the, there's a big investment in converting the data within the PDF documents to this dynamic uh, searchable database. And as of a short while ago, this was a, an estimate of the other manufacturers in the market and their progression in migrating data. I want to assure all of you that, uh, that we're nearly 100%. Uh, and the, the, last, uh, the last few items are what I would call normal business, where at any given time we're in the process of, of certifying or recertifying a product. So we've essentially achieved a saturation in, as an early adopter to make sure that, uh, that we are a leader in this type of tool. To show you what it looks like, uh, taking it from concept to a few screen captures. Uh, as I mentioned, most of the searches will be done looking for a family of products. In this example, exit devices, which corresponds to ANSI BHMA A156.3. And I'm showing an example where a user would apply different filters via dropdowns to search for a RIM exit device. Uh, in cases where a manufacturer did not make good use of uh, the free text fields uh, and or provide enough detail about models that may be part of a family or series of products, it may be difficult for a user to find those. So I can assure you that we've spent a lot of time making sure that our data 
uh, is, uh, is readable and of high value in the course of keyword searching. Continuing the drill down, Secure Bolt is a trademark that's used by the Corbin Russwin brand. And by applying this keyword, you're able to pull together uh, the, uh, the limited subset of uh, products. Uh, here's a, a, a better example, or uh, at least a, it's a, a larger example showing you what it would look like as you pulled together the uh, precise uh, filtering criteria. So the, the data is what makes it robust. Um, the way that we go to market is uh, we utilize a, a, a software package called Opening Studios, which, uh, which has the specification language or text that's used for um, the, to achieve sales. And taking the example that I just showed you, this would be the section of Opening Studios where, where one would pull together the, uh, a, a product for to satisfy conventional exit device. So this particular one uh, is uh, we is easily demonstrated to be a certified product uh, in the directory, conforming to all of the requirements uh, within that. And that's that's taking it all the way from you know how we would go to market to how we would demonstrate our uh, our certified. Um, the attributes in the form of a certified product directory. Uh, I open it up to, to questions now, if there are any. Again, we ask that you type the questions into the Q&A section and we will have Chris answer them in real time. Chris, we have our first question. They're asking, where is the access to the directory once it goes live? If uh, you uh, search um, BHMA or Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association, you'll uh, see on the, uh, the landing page, uh, there's a direction to the certified product directory. And you'll also find additional information about what uh, what type of uh, of steps a manufacturer goes through to uh, to certify. So there's the directory plus a lot of ancillary information you'll find there. Thank you. Another question: We have many brands that do not have clearly descriptive grades for security and operational separately. Will the new format overcome that? Um, per, perhaps you can clarify the question because uh, it's it's very common within the standards to uh, clearly link performance to grade one, grade two, grade three, and in some cases there are even additional qualifiers or or op options that build off of that. So it would within within the certification program and the standards. Uh, I I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, if if the question is by brand and product, uh, are we participating in the certification program? That's that's a question I would direct. Uh, I can direct to the brand champions. That's that's kind of maybe a separate topic. Okay. Yeah, the way I read the question, uh, I don't think it was directed towards Asa Abloy. Uh, I think it was directed towards other brands that may not reference a BHMA certification, but they say they're built to grade one or to grade two. That's the way I read it. Ah, okay. That's, that makes uh, more sense, is that uh, the, the use of the term certified to, you know, ANSI, BHMA, et cetera, that is a, a a term only allowed by a member that participates in this program. It's I don't want to say it's common, but uh, the alternative to that is is designed to meet or tested to 
and there may be other limited permutations of it that that could be allowed you know what that uh, because you have to a, a manufacturer would have to avoid the term certified because this the bhma symbol is a protected mark reserved for participation in this program so what does that mean if you're if you're going to market uh, and you're competing against, you have an Asa Abloy brand like Corbin Ruswin that's competing against the Acme company, my fictional company, and they don't participate in the program. Uh, you, you should be pointing that out to the customer that these products are not on equal footing, that, uh, that they are, are not to be compared. Uh, and uh, the, the superior product is the one that carries the certification as agreed to by the industry that developed the standard. I mean, that would, that would be my recommended, you know, selling tactic or sales tactic. Great. Thank you. The uh, last question that we have here, uh, could you clarify the difference between UL online, UL listed products and BHMA? Sure. Um, much like I, explained with um, BHMA standards that are additive, a, uh, a product can have many different attributes. So, so going back to the example that I showed for a cylindrical lock, what I, what I did not show you is that that product is certified with UL as a fire rated cylindrical lock. That product is also certified uh, with UL as a, uh, a single point lock with an electrified uh, locking uh, mechanism. Now those performance standards for, for those attributes are, are controlled by, managed by UL. They dovetail with the, the other performance attributes that I listed out when I'm, we were um, talking about that particular product. Um, you know, like, likewise, we may also carry an FCC Part 15 certification. The product may also have a, uh, a Florida Building Commission certification. It may be recognized by the California State Fire Marshal, et cetera, et cetera. So any one of our products, you know, carries, carries these different certifications. And they, you know, in some cases, there's some overlap. But in many cases, it's an additive attribute package you know, for our product. Thank you. One more question just came in. Stating that different manufacturers listed on the BHMA uh, CPD have their own formats to list their products. Uh, this person feels that it's a challenge to do Apple and Apple comparisons between the brands. Will the new format overcome it? Or can you direct them into a, a way to compare like products from different brands? Yes, the, uh, the, because the new CPD is a relational database, the, there's a very rigorous control of, uh, of the data fields. Now, keep in mind that a portion of the fields are, are controlled via, you know, via lookup values, and a portion of them are free text. So the example that I showed you for a RIM exit device you, you would, if you were looking at a whole series of RIM exit devices, there is an, an ANSI number that's assigned to a RIM exit device. Uh, now, uh, so then how do you differentiate them? That, that would be where some of the free text comes into play. So the Acme company can have a RIM exit device, but only Corbin Ruswin can have an ex a RIM exit device with a, sp a unique type of latch bolt known as the secure bolt. And, and you would be able to pull together the, the subset, the unique products within that larger set. And this is true of all of the standards. All of them have some form of, of ANSI number or ANSI type which which categorizes the products for that comparison that you're looking for. And, and the new database forces that, if you will. Thank you, Chris. Uh, that seems to be the last question. We can hang on for another minute in case anyone has any uh, last minute questions before we wrap up. 
I would like to thank everyone for participating today. Uh, you will find the recording available online within 24 hours, as well as uh, tomorrow we will be releasing our updated schedule of new classes. Please feel free to attend any of them that are of interest to you. With that, we'll close out this session. I wanna thank everyone for attending.